This is problem number four. I'll read it to you. The weight of passengers on a roller coaster increases by 50% as the car goes through a dip with a 30 meter radius of curvature. What is the car's speed at the bottom of the dip? So we want to know what its speed is at the bottom of this part of the roller coaster. So I'll draw a picture like this. And we have our coaster car down here. And since we want to know the speed, this is going to deal with well, it might deal with kinematics, but we want to also uh, use the fact that because we're going through a circle, then we're going to need to have centripetal acceleration. And the equation for that is AC is equal to V squared uh, over R, where R is the radius of the circle. And they give us the radius of the circle to be 30. And we want to know what this V is. So what we're given, though, is that the weight increases by 50%. And what they mean here by weight, that's going to translate to the normal force. So if you look at the free body diagram of this guy, of the car, there's going to be a force going down, which is, this is a, what's a little bit confusing, is that usually we say that the weight is the force of gravity, which is the mass times the gravity. And then what you really feel as your weight is how much you get pushed on, which is going to be the normal force. So really, when you feel your weight, this is what you feel. And that's going to be 50% more than this. So 50% more is going to be 1.5 times mg. One for the original amount, and then 50% more. So that's going to be the normal force. And if we look at... Newton's second law for this, we're going to have sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. Sum of forces here is going to be 1.5 mg minus mg. So I'm writing the normal force minus w equals mass times acceleration. And this is in the centripetal direction. This is the centripetal direction. So this is going to be your centripetal force. And this is N minus W equals MA. So just should have written this before that one. So the M's cancel out. That's what's kind of nice. 1.5G minus G equals AC. 0.5G equals AC. So we can use this in our equation over here. And we want it to get V. And now we know what R is, we know what G is, so we'll be able to actually use numbers for this. So V is equal to R times G times 0.5. Sorry, V squared is equal to that, so V is going to be equal to the square root of all of this. And we get a number for that. Square root 0.5 times R, which is 30 times g, which I can put as 9.81, I get 12.13, rounds to 12. All of my units were in meters, or in SI units. So I had meters, and g I put in as meters per second squared. So putting in SI units, I'm going to get SI units back out. Well, done.